So today we are going to talk about MPI collectives. So these are basically operations that are performed by all the ranks together. Okay. Send and receive are between two processes, right? But uh, collectives are amongst all the processes, right? So let's see what are the kind of operations there are. So there are synchronization operations. So if all the processes want to synchronize at a point, right? At a particular location in the code, you want all the processes to synchronize and proceed beyond that only after they've all reached that point, right? So that is synchronization. The second reason for doing this is data movement, which is across all processes, right? Some kind of data movement, right? For instance, broadcast is an example where one processor sends to all the other processes, okay? And another is basically doing some kind of collective computation, okay? So an example of collective computation is where you want to maybe add up array elements across all processes, okay? So we've discussed uh, reduce operation, right? So it's uh, the same as that. All right, so let's look at some of the MPI calls. For synchronization, the call is MPI barrier, all right? And what is the argument it takes? Just the communicator, right? And what is the communicator? Well, for now, we'll just assume that the communicator is MPI com world, right? So what this does is essentially, let's say that you are writing some code, right? In your main routine, you're writing some code. And if at some point of time you say MPI barrier, MPI com world. So what's going to happen at this point of time? Maybe you're doing some computation, right? And at this point of time, you call MPI barrier. So what's going to happen at this point of time? Let's say there are three processes, right? P0, P1, P2. So if P0 reaches here, it's going to not come out of this call, MPI barrier. It's a blocking call. So it's not going to exit this call until P1 and P2 have also reached MPI barrier in their respective codes. Now, obviously, each processor is executing its own code, right? So P0 will have some computation of its own to do, P1 will have some computation of its own to do, and P2 will have some computation of its own to do. So it's going to wait for all these processors to reach this point, right? When all of them enter the MPI barrier call, all three of them can now get out of it, right? So the call returns for all three of them. Let's look at the next call. This is MPI broadcast. So this is something we have already seen, but let's look at the arguments carefully. So you pass a buffer, you pass a count, the data type, the root, and the communicator. So let's talk about count, right? So what is this count? So broadcast is basically you have an array of elements, right, of type, data type, right? It might be MPI int, MPI character, and so on. Right? So if you have, let's say, 10 MPI integers, so you will pass the count as 10. Right? So it's an array of 10 integers. And buffer essentially points to the starting of this. Right? It's the pointer to the starting of this array, right? this buffer. What is root? So root is the rank which is doing the broadcast. So what's going to happen? Let's understand what really happens in this case. So at the starting, so P0, P1, and P2, let's say P0 has the data A, B, C, D, E. And uh, what is there with P1 and P2? Nothing. These arrays are not initialized. So what's going to happen after the broadcast complete? So let's say if the root is 0, this is rank 0, right? So what's going to happen is that at the end, you're going to have A, B, C, D, E here and A, B, C, D, E here. Okay, is that clear? Simple. And of course, any processor can be the root, right? Is it different from sending data using MPI send? Yeah, so what is the difference in using MPI send versus using MPI broadcast? Yeah. So the, the crux is that the underlying MPI library can implement a broadcast much, much more efficiently, 
right? So let me give you an example. That's a good question. Let me give you an example. Again, this is getting deeper, but still it, it's good to know, right? So let's say all the processors are sitting on a straight line, right? It's a linear network. The topology is a linear network. And let's say that this processor wants to do a broadcast. Now, some of the networks support a broadcast operation at the link layer. What that will mean is that if you want to send the data one, you can put this data onto the line and broadcast it and everybody will pick it up, right? So what is the time taken? Just the time to transmit one on the line, right? On this link, that's all the time it takes. Whereas if you're doing point to point, if you are doing sends, you will do send once to this guy, once to this guy, once to this guy, once to this guy, once to this guy. It's gonna take five times the time. Well, whatever the number of francs. Is that clear? Let's come back to what is collective, right? MPI collective is all the processors, all the ranks have to participate in the collective together. So all of them are aware that we are doing a broadcast. So all of them make the call to MPI broadcast. So let's see what happens on P0, P1 and P2, right? It's the same code that is executing. When you do an MPI broadcast over here, let's say the main function, it does some initialization and then just does a broadcast of some data, right? Okay. The same code is executing on P1s. So in sends and receives, what do we do? Well, we have to write if conditions and we say, okay, rank zero is sending, rank one is receiving, something of that sort, right? Somebody is sending and somebody else is receiving. In this case, it's the same call that is taking place on all the nodes. All of them are invoking MPI broadcast. What is the difference? Rank zero will call with this buffer. There's a buffer initialized over here and count, right? And data type and here is the critical thing, the root. What is the root? So if I say root zero and MPI com world, right? The root is zero, okay? The root is the guy who's going to do the broadcast. What are the parameters passed by rank one? It's also making a call to MPI broadcast, but the parameters it's going to pass are count, data type. What is the rank? Rank is again going to be zero. Buffer rank is again going to be zero. Okay, now the buffers are their respective buffers. Remember, each one has its own address space. So this buffer is in rank zero's memory, this buffer is in rank one's memory and so on. But suppose this guy initialized his buffer with the value one and these guys did not initialize it, it's some junk. Now what will happen in this? Well, at the MPI layer on processor zero, it knows that I am the root, I am the root, so I am supposed to send the data, right? So it's going to send the data. On rank one, when it makes a call, it realizes that I am not the root, zero is the root. So it's going to wait for data to arrive. Now the MPI layer running on all these processors is developed by the same person, right? It's, it's the same library that is used, okay? So they know whether, you know, how the MPI broadcast is implemented. Is it implemented by doing a broadcast at the link level? or is it implemented by doing point to point sends, right? So they know how to do the send and how to do the receive because it's the same library, right? So they know that if it's a broadcast based MPI broadcast, then I'm just supposed to listen to the link layer for a broadcasted data, right? Okay, is that point clear? And similarly over here, now rank two knows that I'm not the root, so I have to wait for the data and once the data comes, I'm supposed to fill it up in buffer, right? And same over here, you'll fill it up in buffer. Right? But this guy doesn't fill up in any buffer, of course he's going to send the buffer. Clear? So the critical thing is that all of them are invoking MPI broadcast. Now if, let's say accidentally, you passed this rank as zero over here, rank as one over here, that's not a matching MPI broadcast. These are two different MPI broadcasts, okay? It's going to hang or something weird is gonna happen, right? So you have to be careful about writing the programs. Uh, you have to have matching MPI broadcast. So you can call MPI broadcast twice, once for the first one, once for the second one, right? If you want to broadcast from zero and from one, first do a broadcast from zero, then do a broadcast from one, right? Two different MPI broadcast calls. 
So where is MPA broadcast used? Again, as an example, since I mean we are discussing these calls, we should also you know discuss where these are typically used. So broadcast, uh, if you remember, we were discussing LU decomposition, right? So LU decomposition, when you are working on the ith row, you have to broadcast that entire ith row to all the processors, right? So in MPA broadcast, you're going to use that. Uh, 